Hi, this is Tim Trable. I am going to go through the process of putting a sight glass on the side of my Kegel. Now, I'm in the middle of building an electric brewery right now. I have an electric element in the keg already. I've put a ball valve on the outside, uh, putting together all my parts. I've got a rim system started. I've got all the parts and pieces I need for a brew controller. But I want to get the keg ready because I can use that with or without the brew controller. Anyway, here we go. Okay, the first thing I'm going to do is go over the parts that are going to be necessary to build the sight glass. Down here, I've got a quarter inch street elbow, and it goes to a quarter inch female to a quarter inch male. Uh, I've got a quarter inch bushing, and you know it's, it's got a eighth inch um, fitting uh, threads on the inside of it. I'm not going to use those; doesn't really matter. Uh, I've got a three eighths inch inside diameter hose barb to a quarter inch. Uh, female plumbing fitting. Uh, also have a copper cap, a couple o-rings, and then I got some copper tubing as well as some plastic tubing. Over here we've got an eyelet. Uh, that'll go on the side of the keg to hold the top of the sight glass in place. I'll also probably end up putting a washer around the nuts there. There you go. Now for parts, I got these all at Menards. Um, street elbows, LFAC 739 watts. The bushings, LFAC 738. The hose barb, LFA 298B. Uh, standard half inch copper cap. And standard half inch copper tube. 3 8 inch inside diameter plastic tube. Uh, that will be held in place by the copper tube that's going to sit on top of it. Uh, bought the bushings I, at uh, Brew Supply, or the bushings, the O-rings at a Brew Supply, they're silicone. Uh, honestly, I think you could use rubber uh, and just pick them up at Menards too. I've used them in the past. On my other sight glass that I've already built, I've got rubber. Uh, they're only going to get as hot as the water inside the kettle which is boiling and rubber bushing o-rings are going to be plenty good enough for boiling water alright before we get started I'm going to show you how I have put the same uh, assembly together on uh, another keg that I use with a propane burner and here it is all put together down there you got the quarter inch elbow coming out got the barb fitting, got plastic tube, you'll notice that plastic tube's been in there a while. Nice thing about the plastic tube is I can switch it out. Um, doesn't have to have a hose clamp on it if you get a fairly snug fit, there's no pressure so it's not going to leak. And I've got a copper tube going up, cap on the top, eyelid in the side of the keg, and markings on the keg and on the side tube. So that I know how big, how much uh, war, or boiling beer I'll have or wort in the keg. Anyway, that's what it's going to end up looking like. I'll tell you, it works pretty good. One uh, slight caveat to sight glasses is that it really measures the liquid at a cold state. You got to remember, once you heat up your liquid, it does expand. So the settings or the markings on the side for your gallons or liters or however you want to mark it are going to only be as accurate as they are when it's cold um, so you got to compensate for that when you get a little bit warmer alright the first thing I'm going to do is mark where I'm going to put the hole for the sight glass to come out now, as I mentioned earlier, I'm putting it on the left-hand side of my ball valve um, on the inside wiggle of the heating elements. Uh, I'm going to put 
uh, thermal well on the outside wiggle of the heating element so I can go in to the wart a little further than I would be able to in the with a thermal well on the other side. Okay, I'm going to measure over about two inches and if you notice this area right here is the seam where the inside of the keg uh, comes down. You can see if you look really close over there by the dip tube uh, where the seam, the weld seam goes in around the little convex molding around the outside. Um, but I'm going to put the sight glass just right above that, as close to there as possible, so I can get uh, accurate readings at lower volume levels. So somewhere around right here, I think it'd be good. Um, I kind of don't want to be have it in the way of the valve uh, handle here. Um, so I'm going to just put it off to the side here, maybe about right there. <coughs> now I know just by virtue of using my other keg that that's going to be somewhere in the two and a half to three gallon range. Uh, now once I put the street elbow in it's going to come up like this and this barb is going to fit like that. I won't really get any readings till about here which is close to the four gallon range by the time it gets to the plastic tube. So unfortunately that's about as far down as I'm going to be able to put it. Um, in fact, but you know, I may go a little further down. I think I'll try right around here. Again, I typically do from five to ten gallon batches, so if I'm boiling some strike water up, I do use this kettle for for sparge water, strike water, and for boiling, all three. So I want to be able to get an eye on where it's going to be at lower levels. Um, one additional thing with that is that my element uh, does not go down that far. Um, it only it goes when I twist it down it goes to a certain level and not much further. Get much Okay, let's see what happens. Now the hole only needs to be big enough for the bushing to go through. Got my step bit here and it's gonna go, you see that I got one right there. I'm gonna go a step at a time and check it after each step. I don't want to over drill it. That would suck. Okay. Now when you're drilling you want to drill slow. You don't want to get your bit hot. Okay, first, first step. Second step. Third step. Looks like I got one more step to go. The step bit I'm using is one I bought at Harbor Freight. Pretty straightforward. Not real expensive, especially if you use one of their 20 or 25% off coupons that they always run. I think I bought two step bits. One larger one that goes up to like an inch and an eighth. And this one for 12 bucks price. 20% discount, somewhere around 10 bucks. Alright, there we go. That's where I need to be. I'll clean it. Clean up. Make sure you don't have any barbs. Now there's barb in the inside, so what I think I'll do is clean it up the inside. I'll get some sandpaper and clean that up a little more. Okay, 
now that I've got uh, the hole drilled, I did run over it with a little bit of sandpaper. Take my bushing, put the o ring around it. Now, as with any fittings, I am going to put some pipe thread tape around it. Uh, if you don't, you're just asking for leaks. Okay. Push that out from the inside. Now, before I put this on, might as well put some tape on it too. It's going to be a lot more difficult to do that once it's on there. fairly loose on the inside so to be safe I am going to go ahead and put the second o-ring on the outside I wanted to see how far the fittings went in before they got snug and it wasn't far enough so, I'm looking around here for that second o-ring I've lost it. Oh, here it is. It fell on the floor. Sorry about that. Okay. Get it back here. Okay. Got that through on the outside. Put the O-ring on first. And this on. Yeah, my little multi wrench going in. Super, super tight, but you want it good and snug. If you tighten it too much, you're going to tighten the O-ring out, and you won't have a decent seal. We'll obviously check for leaks when we're done. Next step, put the barb fitting on. Now, obviously, as you can see, I'm using brass fittings here. If you can get stainless fittings, uh, you can do that too. Brass works just fine. Uh, a little loose in the inside, I'm going to snug it up a bit. Okay. I'm going to go all the way up to the top of the rim, measure from where the bar bends at the bottom to the top. And it looks like I got uh, about 15 inches. <laughs> sit on there. Put a cap on top. Just like that. Now, now I've got this on here. And I got my drill out. I'm going to make a mark for the hook guy. I'm going to sit over here and go against there. So, shake that a little. And, uh, all right, there.
There you have it. The next step in the process is going to be cutting a slot down that uh, copper pipe there so I can see into the tube. In order to do that, I want to mark where I want to start. I'm going to do that right there. And where I want to finish, the top of my keg is right about here. So, just for the sake of Okay, right where the eyelet is, is where the top of the keg is, so I'm going to go just underneath it, right about there. This is going to be a little bit tricky. Um, what I'm going to have to do is take my grinder with a good cutoff saw blade and just cut a slot down the middle, grind it a little wide, and... Uh, It'll be a nice slot to see through. Okay, you can see here I've got a little bit of a bench dog system set up here. A couple clamps holding the pipe down. And there's my dot right there and my dot right up there. I'm going to cut a slot from end to end. I'm going to use that slot as a guide for a larger grinder blade. Um, i got my grinder here. It's got a cutoff wheel on it. Uh, probably left over from when I cut the top off of my kegs. Uh, it's going to be a little loud. Uh, first thing I'm going to do though is put on my safety glasses. Uh, there's a lot of rules to working with tools. I didn't have the glasses on when I was drilling because it was kind of far away from me. But grinding tends to spew everywhere. All right, here we go. Now, before I did this, I did check to see the rotation of my blade, and it is rotating uh, counterclockwise away from me, so it's going to pull the pipe in this way, so I'm going to go this way. Okay, now it's time to solder. I'm just going to clean up the end of this real good. Clean up this real good. Okay, got the flux here. I can't find my flux brush, so I'm just going to it the old fashioned way. Okay. The torch going here. Striker, either. Yeah. Again, I put this up so that when I put the cap on here, so that if the tube spews out, sometimes it'll boil a little bit. So, it'll keep it from splashing, at least up in the air. That should do it.
And there we have it. Nice clean cup. There you go. Final step in the process of building this thing is measuring the tube. So, let's back to the keg over here. Again, this is gonna sit down. Okay, from the move back a little bit. This is gonna sit from the eyelet down to the bottom. Gonna sit right on top there. Before I cut this, I do want to make sure I got the right size. Yeah, that's good stuff. Make it easy. Let's use my I'll cut it. Bada bang. Just done like this. Tube in there. Beat it up there. Beat it up. Looks like I may have to clean out the inside of this copper a little bit. And there you have it. Next step, start adding water, a gallon or half gallon at a time. Take your magic marker, make marks on the tube, make marks in the keg if you like. I like doing that too for extra reference. And you're good to go. Again, let's see. One sight glass. Obviously, you want to check for leaks, make sure things work. Okay, there you have it. This is Tim Trable. I hope this project uh, works for you like it works for me. As I mentioned when I showed you my other keg that has a homemade sight glass on it, uh, you can change the tube out, tube out if it gets cloudy. It's not going to leak. These tubes are uh, going to withstand the heat just fine. You got to figure once the liquid gets into the tube, it's going to cool down pretty quickly. Um, the heat of the uh, Wart will actually make the tube uh, stay on the barb fitting a little bit better. Uh, shouldn't leak on you. Uh, if you do, I don't know, maybe run a twist tie around it or a piece of uh, picture wire around the barb fitting and uh, wrap it around, tighten it up, and then put the copper uh, sight tube over the top of it uh, to hold it in place. That should eliminate any possible leaks. Uh, let me know what you think. I'll keep doing more of these videos as I get done and further along in my projects. Uh, the next one I'm going to be doing uh, will probably be uh, a step by step or at least outline of building a brew controller. Um, I'm using some basic uh, setup with plans started as a base with the brew controller on the cheap. Uh, instructable that's sitting out there uh, also a bunch of other ones out there uh, modifying it to my own needs anyway I hope you enjoy this take care cheers yeah.